was. The jury awarded every penny and they paid on that case, $29.5 million, all non-economic damages. And here, this is why we're all in this room. This is what I want to talk about. You, sir, with the backpack, walking out. Hold on for a second. Grab that guy. Grab him by the scruff of his neck. Come on, back here. But Carrie B. Young, she, that would be a 250 case in California. $250,000, the most egregious malpractice, and it happens. Medical negligence is the third leading cause of death in this state. The third leading cause of death. It is our job as lawyers to change bad law, isn't it? It's our job. Because in Iowa, in Iowa, people are worth more. They're worth more than they are in California. Life is worth more. In California, each and every one of you, that asset, Mr. Galipo, all of you, your loved ones, they're worth $250,000 dead soaking wet when they're negligently killed. That's what they're worth, 250,000 after attorney's fees, after costs, that's 150 grand. It's been that way for a long time. You have the ability, each and every one of you, you have the ability to change this. If we stick together, if we do something about it, you can change it, we can get rid of this. It hasn't been changed, it's gonna be 45 years, 45 years since this law was put on the books. You can make Californians lives worth just as much as I am. If you all decide to be selfless. That's when this law was passed, Michael. Dead babies. If your baby's killed, $150,000, no matter how egregious the negligence is. The, the case you told us about, was there a medical negligence aspect to that case? There was. Capped at 250. Capped at 250 because that big delay in getting that aneurysm taken care of, it wasn't just the insurance company. Mr. Echeverry or Ricardo handled the med, med negligence case, but because she's a stay at home mom, that's a 250 case. The case he was talking about. It's heartbreaking because insurance company lobbyists and special interest groups convinced a corrupt governor by the name of Jerry Brown to pass something into law in 1975 when the Vietnam War was still going on and it hasn't changed to the tune of a penny, to the tune of a dollar. If we change this, this ballot measure, come over to the yoga room here in a minute. I'm gonna head right over there. It's LaFleur room two and I'll talk to you about the ballot measure with Jamie Court, Consumer Watchdog, a number of us, or Bob Simon, a number of us are working on together. The lawyers up here, we're all working on this together. We're all gonna change this together. Come talk to us about it. And here's the way we're gonna do it. First of all, it has to start with us acknowledging that we have a duty. We have a duty to change something that's bad. It's our duty. It, it really, there, there's not anything more important that, that we'll have done in our careers. Nothing more important than changing this law. And with the ballot measure, which you look back and, and there, was a, there was a measure and people might say, oh man, it didn't pass before. That's because there was horrible voter turnout. We have the polling. Over 71% approval with the way we've written it up. It gets rid of the caps on attorney's fees in catastrophic cases and wrongful death cases. There's so much to it. It gets rid of the collateral source rule. It gets rid of periodic payments. And it also has a provision to make sure frivolous lawsuits are not filed against doctors and healthcare providers. We have to file a certificate of merit and say, hey, we talked to an expert. And there are consequences if we don't. It's the same law that exists in other states. And we're gonna get it on the ballot, and we're gonna win. But we need to raise, we need to raise at least $30 million to do it. I'm putting up at least $4 million of my own money. My partners are all putting up millions of dollars. 
we have, one of the things that we do is as lawyers, we come to this. We come to this and we come to these different, you know, these conventions, these places. We want to learn from each other, right? We do. But, and we want to help each other, right? I mean, Steve Bartizer, you've been coming here for how long? 15 years. It, we just hit one of the, the largest verdicts in California history in personal injury case, over $120 million, $113 million case that, that he just tried because of coming and learning. And just amazing work that we all do. But we also come here, brutal honesty, hoping. Hoping. We put up our booths. We throw our events, we sponsor things, we shake hands, we kiss babies, we have dinners, we invite people. Brutal honesty, we all hope to walk away with better business, right? We all hope to get a good case out of it. So here's the deal, and, and it's not just me. If you call, you want Courtney and I, or my partners, anyone in my firm, to work on your biggest case. And you know how we all split the attorney's fees? Our attorney's fees don't go to us. We do it pro bono. You get the client to agree to give the percentage of money that would go to the attorney to this cause, to change this law. And Mike Gallagher, Arash Hamancourt, Olivier, I mean the Panish firm, all these guys, all of them, Bob Simon, you talk to any of them. Everyone here, Mr. Echeverria, he said, I'm in, I'll do it. Mr. Boylet guaranteed he'd do it without hesitation and any of the partners in his great firm. Any of these lawyers who you're meeting with that you're shaking hands with, Steve Bartizarian, he said, I am in, I am in. They all will commit at least, at least $1 million of pro bono work to have fees on the cases that they work with other lawyers on put in to fighting this. So that means you need help on a case? All right, case, you know, it's worth $500,000. Mr. Bartizarian, Mr. Broilette, any of these lawyers up here, Ricardo Echeverria, Rahul, gee, boy, talk about verdict. Can you ever say no to that guy? I don't know a jury that has. Right? Bob Simon, anybody here, Marianne Gallagher, she'll step up. Judge Jessner, she's going to give up her robe just to come do this with us. I mean, check her out. She's motivated. Right? We'll, we'll say, okay, so these are the attorney's fees. I'm not going to take a million dollars in attorney's fees. A million dollars in attorney's fees on this case will go to this effort to raise that $30 million. In any case, that you asked me to help on, and I have limited time. You got kids, a lot of them, one on the way. Any case that, that Courtney helps you on, we will donate 100% of our fees on a case, on 10 cases, to this effort, as well as putting our own money up. And if you all can do something, you know, I, if you can put money into it, great, you'll hear more about it later, I'm not gonna ask you for that now. Reach out to me, reach out to us. If you have advertising, you don't have, you can't put up money, a million dollars like these other folks can and will. But if you can give us your billboards, give us your TV space in the months of July, August, September, October. Jacob and Ronnie, where are you? Jacob and Ronnie, we need your billboards to educate the public. Right? I mean, TV commercials, you name it. Give us your advertising space and make a change for this state Make a change for this state. Listen to this. You can make a change. You can make a change. You can do it if you commit. Annette, um, thank you for your courage. It's, it's, it takes my breath away to listen to you. It leaves me speechless. It, it really does. The, the thing is, this is not an attack on doctors. It's not. In 1975, doctors were protesting, saying, pass this law, pass this law. And Jerry Brown said to Tom Girardi, who's in the room, he said, 
Tom, you know, they're protesting. I'm going to sign this. It's bullshit. It's unconstitutional. The Supreme Court won't uphold it. That was two years before I was born. Two years before I was born. I served in the armed forces as a medic. And in 1998 is when I first handled my first medical malpractice case as a law student. And I learned about this cap. I said, wow, this is insane. This has gone on for, for 23 years. It hasn't changed. It hasn't changed. But the doctors who were protesting, they were fed lies and propaganda from the insurance industry who told them, listen, this is going to reduce your rates. It was a lie. It was a lie. And doctors need to, I, I want you to hear me. This isn't an attack on you. Stand with us. It's the right thing. If, if we believe in civil rights, if we believe in our civil justice system, this is horrible. Horrible. And it's not that the cap should be in, increased. No, that didn't work. It's got to go. It's got to go. And if we stand together with truth and honesty and an open heart, the thing is about this 2020 election, people's eyes are open. People's eyes are open like, like they've never been open before. We can make a change in 2020 if we stand together and stand strong. I have a little video I want you to see. Thank you. Gary Dordickson. Mia was eight weeks old when her heart stopped beating because of medical negligence. She will live with brain damage and cerebral palsy for the rest of her life. Chris because of a law passed in 1975, negligence victims in California like Mia have been capped $250,000 as the maximum compensation they can receive for lifelong non-economic damages, such as loss of enjoyment of life, pain, suffering, emotional distress, and disfigurement. Wrongful death damage is caused by medical negligence. Loss of love, companionship, and the relationship of a loved one are also capped at $250,000. For 43 years, every attempt to change this cap has been defeated by the insurance companies who make billions of dollars in profits by keeping the cap in place. Tonight's parents insisted in their birthing plan that under no circumstances would forceps be used when delivering their baby. The delivery doctor used forceps anyway without permission and crushed baby Tanaya's head, causing her brain to bleed, sentencing her to a life of cerebral palsy and living in a body that will never work. Sophia was in life-threatening distress without oxygen while her mother was in labor. Because of medical negligence, she suffers from spastic quadriplegia and cerebral palsy and lives in a body that will never work. These are three of many thousands of examples of lives that have been irreparably damaged by medical negligence. Getting rid of the $250,000 cap will not increase the cost of health care or insurance. Those are insurance company lives. The truth is that getting rid of the cap will save taxpayer dollars, reduce health care costs by making the insurance companies of the medical institutions and groups bear the responsibility for the cost of compensating negligence victims. And importantly, getting rid of the cap will put an end to over 42 years of dishonesty and lying to California juries who are not told that their verdicts are reduced to $250,000. In California, since the cap was out in place, medical negligence has become the third leading cause of death. That's according to the American Medical Association studies and research. In 2020, voters, independents, Republicans, Democrats, Libertarians, all voters who care about equality, being honest with juries, civil justice, and who believe that patient rights are more important than insurance company profits, voters will have the opportunity to get rid of the cap that insurance companies, their lobbyists, and bought and paid for politicians want to keep in place for another 42 years. So, well, you reach out. Thank you for giving me the honor of being your trial lawyer of the year. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, at 1 30, we will have a master's panel. We have the Velvet Hammer, Karen Kohler is here, we have Dale Glipper who will be on. And if you don't have the money to donate, guys, it's as powerful as your cell phone. We have the ways to reach people directly with videos like this, to reach audiences so the voters are more informed and do the right thing. 